As South Florida's once booming film industry continues to struggle, the area's diverse independent film community is taking center stage from film incentives to film festivals. We look at the state of indie film and resources for filmmakers to tell their stories. That and more. Stay with us as we dive into your South Florida. Hi, I'm Vivian Martel, co-founder of O Cinema, filling in for Pam Giganti. Thanks for joining us. South Florida's independent filmmakers have a unique vantage point to tell authentic stories of South Florida and its people, full of rich history and diverse communities. And by staying local and hiring local, these indie filmmakers have taken the place once held by big budget productions, who were lured away by nearby states in recent years, following the end of Florida's film incentive program. As part of our recent town hall, I was joined by local filmmakers, Kathleen Dean and Robert Colomb and Miami-Dade's Film and Entertainment Commissioner, Sandy Leiterman, to discuss South Florida's film community and learn about the latest resources for filmmakers. Let's start by looking at the current state of film of the, of the film industry here. From the lack of state incentives to a shutdown of productions due to the pandemic, that it's been a, a difficult few years here. And in response, Miami-Dade County recently announced an update to the film incentive that say they say will make it easier for productions um, to qualify for these tax breaks. Sandy, if we can begin with you, can you give us an update on the film production in this county and tell us more about those incentives? Our film community, of course, as you mentioned, we, we have not been able to bring in a lot of the larger projects into the community because we don't have a state sales tax, you know, sales um, or a, a tax credit program or any type of incentive program. However, our local community is thriving. And I say that that our local indie filmmakers are keeping us alive. And that, um, you know, it warms my heart in so many ways. Uh, but, you know, we, we do have some productions coming in a little bit larger that are, that are helping our economy. Uh, one is from HBO that's been shooting here, as well as there's another one coming from Apple next year. Um, that said, our, uh, we do have a couple of programs for filmmakers. Uh, we have the county has a program that's for the a little bit larger budget um, it, filmmakers. The, the other incentives that we have are actually, and they're all stackable, we have for, for, for the indie filmmakers that have lower budgets, Miami Beach has a wonderful program. They have a, for $25,000 uh, spend, minimum spend in Miami Beach, you get $10,000 back. That's pretty good, pretty good uh, ROI there. Uh, to get that, you have to shoot three days, at least three days in Miami Beach, and either you have to have 70% of your cast and crew be Miami-Dade County residents, or if you have a hotel, if you have people staying at a hotel, they have to, it has to be a uh, Miami Beach hotel. And then in the city of North Miami, they also have an incentive program, which kind of varies, and there's a couple of different ways that you can uh, get free ba um, base camp and other things and free police. But they also have, if you shoot in their underdeveloped areas, you can get 30% back on if you minimum spend of 10,000, but the most that they would um, uh, give 30% back on is $50,000 being spent in that area. So basically that's a $15,000, you get up to $15,000 back from the city of North Miami. And then also the state of Florida still has a sales tax exemption, exemption program. That's a 7.5%, you know, that you don't have to pay in sales tax. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, they, they have a list on the state of Florida, uh, um, Film office's website, but pretty much, you know, equipment rentals and location fees and things like that, you don't have to pay sales tax on. There's a lot of uh, great stories in South Florida waiting to be told, and we know this. Um, but whether or not these films can get made will come down to uh, to capital. Uh, Kathleen, as a as a local independent filmmaker, what's been your experience with fundraising for films, and and what's your approach? My approach for each project is slightly different. Um, for my last um, documentary project, I received funding from um, the Miami International Film Festival, um, from the Wolfson Archives. We also launched a crowdfunding campaign. Um, there's Kickstarter, GoFundMe, and a number of other platforms that work very well. Um, community support, and because of the um, the subject matter of this film, I was able to connect with with a community that supported the, the subject matter. So 
we've received fundings from aquatics professionals from across the country. So um, there, there was a, a number of different ways to go about raising funds for this particular project. And then, of course, you know, I always accept Cash App, Zelle, <laughs> checks. Robert, what about you? What's your advice for filmmakers looking for financing? I encourage you to form community with all your local art house cinemas, O Cinema, of course, Coral Gables Art Cinema, the Cosford Cinema, and, you know, our local film support organizations like Filmgate and the recently launched Miami Film Lab, who are really trying to do important work here to get films funded, get films crewed. You know, they're really all in. And yes, even if they don't seem like traditional filmmaking spaces, engage with them, sign up for the mailing list, read the emails, you know, tap into what's going on. Some good examples of these non-traditional film spaces are like Miami Light Project, Live Arts Miami, go to a dance show, go to a visual arts exhibit, because not only will these experiences expand your worldview as an artist yourself, but the more you engage with the people that are in the arts ecosystem, the more you find yourself meeting potential collaborators, both creative collaborators and funders, or both. I'll also say, uh, pay attention to national funds and grants. Another Third Horizon feature that's in development right now called Untitled Opalaka Project won a grant from SF Film in San Francisco and also received support from the Sundance Institute. It's not just about receiving support, but giving it as well. So if you're early in your career, you're gonna have to get creative and chances are you're gonna be receiving a lot of support through in-kind offerings. So for this to be a healthy, supportive ecosystem, you know, you should be giving some of that back as well. And uh, I can also tease that Third Horizon will begin offering small project grants in 2022. While we can't share the specifics on dates right now, we did um, receive transformative funding from the Knight Foundation in 2020 that will allow us to re-grant funding and support to filmmakers in Miami starting next year. And, you know, Knight was our founding funder when we started the festival in 2016. And we're so grateful that they've entrusted us with continuing to grow and support our filmmaking community in this way. So a lot of different ways, I think. Uh, now, bef before we continue our discussion, your South Florida crew had the chance to check out our newly reopened O Cinema South Beach with my co-founder, Kareem Tabsh. Uh, let's take a look. Part of what makes the space unique is this amazing collection of books and art from the Miami Beach Film Society, which we host here. So you have these great cabinets with film ephemera and history and uh, a huge collection of books that folks can poke their head in when they're visiting. Uh, that's really about the whole breadth of the history of cinema around the world. So Vivian Martell and I decided to start a cinema because what we saw was a lack of independent films in South Florida. Uh, and Miami had grown in such enormous ways in arts and culture, but film seemed to be the kind of thing that hadn't caught up. So O Cinema opened its doors in Wynwood in 2011, um, and that was our home for many years. Uh, we expanded from there to uh, North Beach in Miami Beach. Uh, and as is wont to happen, real estate uh, had other plans. So O Cinema Wynwood and O Cinema North Beach both closed in uh, the spring of 2019. But luckily for us, we were invited to come in and take over the old Miami Beach Cinematheque at Historic City Hall in South Beach. And today it's O Cinema South Beach. We were only open and operating for six months before uh, it was time to close our doors in response to the pandemic. One of the things that we did uh, in response to the pandemic is try to figure out how we can bring what O Cinema does every day into the homes of people and expand our programming, but also expand our reach. And so we couldn't think of any better partner than our friends of South Florida PBS. And what that turned into was movie time. Every Saturday night, I host Movie Time on South Florida PBS, where we bring a classic Hollywood films right into your home. And you get a little bit of history and trivia and back information on how the film was made and its significance. It's been so exciting to see the response that the program has got and folks who are watching it on the regular. And it's just yet another way that both O Cinema and South Florida PBS are serving the community. You have a myriad of options to watch films at home. Everybody has a gazillion streaming app so you can watch a new film. But there's something different about coming together in a room in the dark with strangers and the collective experience of watching a film. Those sighs, those laughters, they're joyous, they're infectious in the best possible way. And so we're really excited about the fact that folks are returning, slowly but surely, to O Cinema. And I suspect that it's going to keep on going because nothing can change the magic of watching a movie in the dark in a theater. 
You know, O-Cinema is home for independent foreign and art films. I like to say that we show the kind of films you won't see at the neighborhood multiplex. Um, a big part of our mission is to educate, inform, and inspire. Um, and entertain is a big cornerstone of that. We think you can do that all through this wonderful breadth of independent film. Uh, but we also think ourselves as a place where the community can congregate, right? The films that we show on screen reflect the diversity of our community. And uh, what a better way to kind of celebrate who we are and learn about our differences and our similarities than in through the art of cinema, right? Uh, unlike other art forms, the only barrier to entry here is a ticket. And you really can kind of immerse yourselves in worlds and cultures that you otherwise would not experience. South Florida is, does not have a large film industry, but what it does have is a growing film community, and there's a difference there. What we have is folks who are eager to tell stories that are authentic and representative of the diversity of our community and our real experiences. We're in South Beach now, at Cinema South Beach, but South Beach isn't Miami, and it's not South Florida. It's just a small sliver. It's where folks who come to play experience. What's really important to us is celebrating those stories of the folks that make this city the great place it is. And it's so encouraging to see how the film community has responded in telling those stories. We're such amazing filmmakers coming out of South Florida and so many great uh, efforts to kind of amplify and support those voices. We have organizations like Ulay Tharts with the Cinematic Arts Residency, the Third Horizon Film Festival, the Miami Film Festival, the great support of folks like the Knight Foundation. All of this is kind of helping grow our independent film scene. Um, and so while we're not going to be replacing Hollywood anytime soon, uh, what we are going to be doing is creating more opportunities, I hope, for filmmakers to tell stories that are authentic and true to their experience and the experience of the wide breadth and diversity of our community. But if we want those stories to come out of South Florida, if we want uh, the South Florida story to be more than just South Beach, we have to support those filmmakers and find opportunities. And what does that mean? That means looking at the organizations that are already supporting them financially and contributing if we can. It most importantly means watching those films, watching them when they come out in theaters, watching them when they're on streaming, and encouraging others to do so. The only way any ecosystem is going to be uh, thriving is if it's supported. And so I think that we're at a part of you know, the juncture of our history where we want to see our true stories reflected on screen. And uh, we want to encourage folks to continue doing that. You know, Hollywood is only a plane fly away and folks are always wanting to go there. How about we create more opportunities and more desire for folks to stay here? And we do that by supporting the talent we have here. Curry mentioned supporting local indie filmmakers to make sure local talent stays here. Um, how is Miami-Dade County supporting this, um, this community? Well, I will say first off, you know, Kareem said it best is that you have to get people to see your your films. And one of the things that uh, we do, at, at, you know, at Office of Film and Entertainment is that we have a large social me media presence and we actually promote films that whether they're shot here or the, or our uh, local filmmakers shoot somewhere else and their, you know, films are being are, you know, at, at distribution, then we actually promote them for sure. So that, that gets people in the seats or whether the seats be at home or in the movie theater. Also, um, you know, in the position that I uniquely have is that I have a lot of um, connections to a lot of industry stakeholders that are decision makers. And I do my best to connect our local community with those decision makers, whether it be on you know individual basis or with some of the um, some of the uh, I want to say uh, events that I participate in, to bringing in those decision makers so that they can meet our local community, um, you know our local film community, and um, and hopefully get their projects made. Kareem also talked about the the in, in, the importance of allowing space for authentic stories to be told. Uh, Kathleen. Can you talk about the value of representation both on the screen and behind the screen? Yes, I can definitely do that. Um, before I, I get into that, I did want to mention, I have to represent my county. Broward County is also doing a tremendous um, bit to help support local filmmakers as far as screenings, opportunities. I work with Pompano Beach Cultural Arts. They have a series called Montage. That's the last Thursday of every month. We offer an honorarium. I curate it and host it for uh, Pompano Beach Cultural Arts. There's also filmed in Broward, which is part of FLIF, the Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival, where they give a, a platform and amplify the voices of films made in Broward County. 
Um, the Broward County Cultural Division has been a tremendous support to local filmmakers as well as the Community Foundation of Broward. So I just wanted to um, acknowledge those organizations and all that they're doing to support the film community. Um, as far as representation goes, I mean, it's, it's huge. Um, storytelling, you know, every culture has, you know, a storytelling tradition. Storytelling is part of how we, we educate, we preserve cultural traditions, we relate to one another. Um, without that representation, we're not, we're, we're sort of um, getting our stories colonized. We're not having the opportunity to, to share and keep alive individual cultures that are so beautiful and rich. And there's something to, you know, to be learned from one another. I think having more voices at the table um, creates a better union. We need to hear about diverse stories. Um, we need stories that can, you know, connect with different audiences. Um, when I uh, worked on Wade in the Water, Drowning in Racism, it's a documentary film about um, the lack of access to the water uh, in, in Black communities in South Florida. And surprisingly, there were so many um, people who had no idea that that was even a thing. You know, they were, you know, newly immigrants or um, people from other cultures who did not understand that the, you know, the high rate of drowning in the Black community um, you know, has historic and uh, political uh, implications that stem from, you know, Jim Crow segregation. So sharing those individual stories about, you know, South Florida's, um, you know, segregated beaches informs people, it connects people, it provides understanding. I mean, it's just, it's so important to, uh, to unify us. Robert, uh, Kareem gave a shout out uh, to the Third Horizons Film Festival. Can you tell us more about the festival and the creative collective's focus on Latin American and Caribbean films? We believe that, you know, Miami is as much a Caribbean city as it is an American city. And our programming is trying to highlight the cinema that's emerging from the region, you know, currently and its diaspora too. And so Miami and the Caribbean, you know, are at the forefront of so many pressing matters that the rest of the world is wrestling with, namely climate change, but then also issues around identity, immigration, belonging and, and we think that the stories from our region are really are of crucial importance right now for the world to have a true understanding of itself and we're really proud that the festival was named one of the coolest festivals in the world by movie maker magazine in 2019 and then again in 2021 and our sixth edition i know it's so sick and then our sixth edition returns in summer 2022 and we're going to be announcing the exact dates and our call for submissions in just a few weeks so sometime in November. Uh, Sandy, another question for you. So Film Miami recently raised the cost of uh, film permits. Can you tell us what happened and what's that about? Yeah, we raised it by $25. Um, so it was 100. It started in, uh, I think, 2007. And we haven't raised the rates since then. That's, this is the first raise in um, the fees. And there, it was twofold. One, uh, we actually had to change our ordinance so that actually um, it's, a, it's a little complicated, but uh, film uh, uh, crews that are less than three that are not taking up a lot of space or do, don't need police don't need any of, you know, county um, uh, resources and um, don't block access for the public actually don't need a film permit anymore. So that's a, a change to our ordinance. So that meant less fees coming in. That was one reason. Also, we are going to be, um, we're going to be launching a brand new permitting system that's going to be an app and it's going to be really easy. And um, so we're trying to update our permitting system. So that's kind of why we raised the rate by $25. So South Florida PBS original production filmmaker supports local indie filmmakers by providing a platform to share these stories with a wider audience. Kathleen, oh, I need to mention Kathleen, nominated for Wade in the Water, both as director and for film, congratulations. Um, you. So your film, <laughs> so your film Wade in the Water, Drowning in Racism was featured on season four of Filmmaker. Can you tell us, uh, a little bit more about the film and the inspiration behind it. So um, Wade in the Water, I actually was combing through the Wolfson archives a couple of years ago and I came across some incredible footage of the protests that the wade-ins that took place in South Florida to desegregate the beaches and the pools. 
And I was just so inspired. I, I had to do something with this material. So I, I stored it away. And then um, later on, I had started swimming with an organization called Diversity in Aquatics. And uh, during a tour of the International Swimming Hall of Fame, I was taken on a, a tour of their gallery. They had an art exhibition that, that chronicled the history of swimming um, um, pre-colonization, pre-slavery. And um, it through art, it showcased the, the history of Africans in swimming. Africans were strong swimmers. They um, were pearl divers. They taught Europeans how to swim. Um, so inspired by, by, by that tour and the footage, I, I married the two and I, I put together the documentary, Wade in the Water, Drowning in Racism. And, um, you know, through my, um, my further interaction with diversity and aquatics and the International Swimming Hall of Fame, um, I felt it was really important to use this particular film for, for outreach and community engagement um, because of the disparity in the drowning rate, children of color are drowning, you know, at, I think it's six times the rate of, um, Caucasian children. And, um, you know, we felt that this film could definitely engage audiences and then we could, um, educate people and, and sort of convince, um, BIPOC people to, who have lost their connection to the water through Jim Crow segregation and racism to, to reconnect with the water, learn how to swim, um, you know, reconnect. There's so many powerful benefits uh, to water for, you know, healing, um, spirituality, health, and happiness. So um, weight in the water, you know, kind of came together that way. So Robert, Tell us about this free mobile cinema, this mobile cinema thing you're doing. It sounds like so much fun. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so continuing, you know, continuing this theme of highlighting on highlighted work that's important to the core identities of our communities, especially our immigrant communities in Miami. In 2022, we're launching Cine Mobile, which is a new mobile micro cinema project that takes films directly into people's neighborhoods. And we're going to be touring a program of undistributed Latin American and Caribbean films from the places that we have come in outdoor community spaces uh, in the neighborhoods where many of us now live. So it's gonna be a really cool project. We'll also be touring local films and we're undergoing a huge translation project so that all the films that we play can be subtitled in whichever two of the three languages uh, that we speak here that the film isn't in. So Haitian Creole, Spanish, and English. So I'm very excited about that. And so far, Cine Mobile has been supported by Ulite Arts, to harken back to Ulite Arts through an Ellie Award, by a Locust Project Wavemaker Grant. So you see the importance of these local grants. And a micro grant from the Awesome Foundation. So thank you to all those folks. And um, yeah, if you want to get involved with Cine Mobile, if you want to support the project, volunteer. When we start screenings, we're about to need a lot of volunteers or just learn more about Cine Mobile. You can head to cinemobile.red. C I N E M O V I L dot R E D, Cinemovie dot red to find out more. Thank you so much for asking about that. That's a really exciting project. Kathleen, you're also a producer for the, the 48 hour film project. Could you tell us more about the project and how filmmakers can participate? Like, when's the next call and all that good stuff? Because that's a fun project as well. We've had so many wonderful support from the community uh, with, for the 48 hour film project. It's the oldest time film competition in the world. Um, we're in 130 cities around the globe on virtually every continent. And our mission is to um, advance filmmakers and advance filmmaking and provo promote filmmakers. Um, the competition has a tight deadline, 48 hours to, to write, shoot, edit, turn in a short film. So it gets the filmmakers into motion. It's about doing, it's about teamwork um, and no talking. They just, you just gotta get it done. So it's, it's about creativity. Um, we've had wonderful partnerships and, and this, this project, uh, it's celebrating its 20th um, anniversary this year. It's sort of become a rite of passage for filmmakers in South Florida. And we've had partnerships with, with um, O Cinema um, where we've screened films uh, there. And also um, South Florida PBS has been a wonderful supporter of the 48 hour film project. Before the fabulous filmmaker program, 
we partnered with um, South Florida PBS and they um, showcase uh, some of our top films um, several years in a row, gave our filmmakers their um, television debut. Some of the uh, filmmakers who joined the 48 hour film project, um, they had like life changing career opportunities based on our, our relationship with um, South Florida PBS. And um, it's been a wonderful opportunity for people to um, advance their filmmaking careers, to meet other filmmakers to collaborate with, um, and to just to form partnerships, learn new skills, and to advance filmmaking. So I'm, I'm really like thrilled to get to produce this project every year. It's an annual event. Um, it just happened. We just announced our winners of this year's project, which we had to go virtual due to uh, the pandemic. But next year, we hope to be back during the summertime for a, a live in-person 48-hour film project. And you can go to our website, um, sign up for our newsletter, and um, stay connected. We, we do a lot of networking events throughout the year to, to introduce filmmakers to one another. We also offer workshops. And um, I have a new position with the South Florida YMCA. Um, I just joined them as their director of arts and theater performance. So at that organization, I'm gonna be building out um, a film program where we'll have screenings, workshops, and um, it will be the, the home of the 48 hour film festival next year. So we have one other question from, uh, also from YouTube from Emmanuel. Um, they got selected for the Miami Independent Film Festival. What's the next step? I have some thoughts. I think first, you know, talk to the the organizers of the festival. You know, Mindy is a great festival. Laura is amazing. So talk to them. They can, you know, help you out with what's next. And also, I know that that festival is made by filmmakers for filmmakers. So everybody that puts on that festival has been where you are. So you can talk to them and they're, they're going to be the best resource, I think. And then once you get to a festival, just talk to the people that watch the film. It's a great networking opportunity to be screening at a film festival, especially at a festival where the audience is someone that's really going to be interested in, in like a very intimate uh, story, um, like uh, Mindy's audience is. So yeah, just talk to folks. And then, uh, you know, really, really use your time there uh, wisely. I think that after that, there's so much uh, to do after you premiere at your first festival. Um, and I think that uh, it's going to, you know, this is a really great question that's suited for the filmmaking community that you will eventually find and be a part of at places like Mindy. So, you know, make friends with folks, network with folks that have done it before and talk to them about the process. I think that's going to be the best thing. Can I add to that? Um, I, I think you really, as a filmmaker, you really have to market yourself and advocate for yourself when you go to festivals. If it's an in-person festival, perhaps you want to print a palm card. Um, that has a little synopsis of your film and, you know, your film marketing poster. Um, look into local media. Maybe you want to do a press release and send it out. Um, it's your opportunity. You know, you're going to screen. You have to garner an audience. Um, make the most of it in addition to networking. Um, you know, make sure you're using social media to promote that your film is screening at this particular festival. Um, really take advantage of the opportunity. You can watch the full town hall on our Facebook page at Your South FL. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>